was. It's Firm Dog here. Um, so I'm going to do a modification guide on the Maverick. I know this gun came out ages ago, but you know I know this gun inside out. I know what this gun's used for, and it's by far my favorite gun. I'm not even joking. Like I just love this thing. It shoots like a dream. I think the trigger pull's nice, even though the rev mech, you know, where it halfway turns and then shoots the dart, is kind of messed up because sometimes the dart gets stuck in the muzzle here. Um, you know, I still love it. It's got a nice grip. I love the grip, to be honest. It's one of my favorite grips. It's got a nice, you know, sound, confirming sound, telling you that it's actually cocked and ready to fire. And since it's a spring, I like spring blasters over flywheel blasters. A lot of people would disagree with me, but I'm more with the stealthy stuff. You know, I keep the hood and all that stuff. And so it's silent until you pull the trigger. Once you pull the trigger, then it's loud and people know where you are. But usually you can run around and stuff by that time. And if you're good enough, you know, you can always win with a spring gun. I don't care what anyone says. Especially at my place. That's how we do it. So I'm going to unscrew the... Well, here... All right. So first I'm going to go over the blaster. It has a nerf tap rail at the top here, which is completely useless. I don't know why you'd ever put a scope up here, because you have to pull back to actually prime the gun. Even though it's got the little this little block in the back showing that, like, you know, so you can't pull the attachment off. The attachments are, like, weak as crap, and it's all... the All the, like, scopes are crap. You know, you really can't... You're not going to aim with a pistol like this. You know, not like a sniper. And there's, you know... There are iron sights included with it, even though the iron sights really don't do anything anyway. So, you know, there's that. It's got a nice grip. I love that. Um, it just looks like a giant hand cannon from Destiny, which kind of makes it cool, I guess. Bright colors, obviously, so that, you know, they don't get in trouble with, like, the law and all that. So I'm going to unscrew the blaster, and then I'm going to go over it, tell you what everything does, and show you what different mods I'm going to do. I'm going to do three different ones. All right, now we're gonna do some disassembly. I've already taken out the screws, and here's the slide. So you want to take your slide out first, because this is, you know, that's it's two it's two separate pieces. The gun's multiple pieces, but to take off the shell, you need to take off the slide. You unscrew the first side, and the other side just slides out from the back. So you're fine there. Um, I I'm doing two guns at once, so that's why it's like I have all the parts everywhere. Um, basically. What this part does, this metal uh, post here, is it catches on the little orange lip in there, and that's when you pull that back, it compresses a dart, or, or dart, compresses a spring, and locks it into a catch. And when you pull the trigger, you're actually releasing that catch, forcing the plastic that was pulled back with the spring, pushing it forward, making an air pocket, and that's what pushes your dart. So that's what that is. Now, um, Taking, undoing the handle was kind of difficult sometimes because it tends to get stuck. But I like to just start from the front and try to keep your screw side up so that you're not, um, you know, um, you know, losing too many screws. Or you can just do what I like to do, and that is keep your screws in a container of some sort. It doesn't matter as long as it's organized. Usually, I like to keep different size screws in different containers and you know mark them or something like that with a picture. Kind of just uh, I just drew like a little quick sketch of the of the gun so that I can do that. But you know it's not too necessary. This gun's very easy to mod, and this is a very good beginner's gun to mod for um, people who are new to modding. It's a uh, it's very easy. So yeah, this hand is a little frustrating. Um, we're going to be doing three mods with this. Um, one of which will be using some more. Um, we're going to be using a Dremel tool, and a Dremel tool is like a blade on steroids. It's like a small little blade that you know you can just cut things with. It's it is an electrical tool. If you don't have one, then unfortunately you can't do it. But it's not a necessary mod. None of these mods are necessary for the operation of the blaster. You know, it just makes it a little more um, comfortable for other people who like to use it. Um, the first one is the um, Penny mod, in which when this gun was made. Uh, what they didn't hear the internals, by the way, so that you can take a picture of it if you, if you uh, take a picture of it if you want. But it's really not that confusing. Is that this spring came in kind of kind of jiggly, and then you can kind of hear it a little bit. It's a little jiggly. So what they did, believe it or not, um, what, what you can do is, fortunately, the size of this spring here. I have another one here. The size of this spring is the perfect size of a U.S. penny. 
So if you get three US pennies and actually put it behind this plastic lip here, you'll close that gap and you'll get the maximum compa um, maximum force out of the spring possible. Or you could just buy a stronger spring and do that if you want. But you know, you don't, you know, if you don't feel like going out of your way to go get a spring, then just do the penny mod, which is just as easy. It's really not that hard. And these springs are, you know, they're, they're not the best, but they're, they're decent, so I'd keep it. Um, notable parts to paint are your muzzle. Um, now, the thing about the muzzle is obviously the law, you know, says that if you're going to be playing with, like, a toy gun or, you know, a gun that's not going to, like, kill anyone you got to have that orange tip at the end. You, um, you know, it's the law. It shows that, you know, you're, you're just playing with a fake gun. It's not a real gun. So I don't recommend painting this, but, you know, it, it's your choice, obviously. Don't come crying to me. Um, you know, that's the reason why they make these guns in such bright colors is because they don't want to get in trouble with the law and stuff. And it's appealing to the young kids, too. This is ideally for a young kid, but, you know, I'm doing this because this is my channel. So, um... Now, what you want to do if you're going to start taking, if you want to get to the this uh, barrel part here, you just want to pull back on this little tab here, and this should want to come out. All right, cool. Now we got this. I'm going to go over this first. Now, the Russian Roulette mod, or uh, after the Penny mod, if you've done that, is it allows you to pull, you know, your barrel out more. So actually, I'm going to just put this back in so I can show you guys. You know, come on, work with me here. Come on. Yeah, come on. There we go. When you press this button, you guys probably know that your barrel comes out. And it only reveals like two holes, possibly three if you, you know, break and you know, squish one of your darts in there. But it doesn't give much. What we're actually going to do, believe it or not, is extend how far this can come out. And one way you can do that is by actually taking a Dremel tool, which is, this is more that advanced mod, and you can actually saw the little lips of plastic that are holding that in that position. So if we, oh, stuff's falling out on me, that's okay. If we, so now I'm going to take this, take this out like I was intending. All right. Come on. There we go. Uh, this little lip of plastic right here catches on the outside of the front right here and it prevents it from moving out too far. And then the other lock is um, this little, uh, it's kind of hard to see, this little rectangle right here, this tiny little, this little notch, that little notch is preventing it too. So we're gonna jumble those two off and I'll show you that after. But um, now, now for the, where it gets a little confusing and there's a lot of parts everywhere so you wanna make sure you're keeping an eye on your parts. You're gonna need some needle nose pliers, by the way, to cut some stuff, the barrel posts. Um, so now, on the side of your small screwdriver, for the actual screws, you like to get a big screwdriver or a hammer, at the back of a hammer, and you want to pry this thing off. Um, so now, I like to go from the, this side with the orange side up. Just take your screwdriver in there, push down. Don't be afraid to use force, because this is hard to take out. And you don't, and something's gonna, and the top here is gonna jump up at you, so. You, wanna, you don't want to lose anything. So I like to keep my hand on top and do it nice and easy. There you go. Um, this is what I was worried about. Oh, wait. No. Not this part. Hold on. It's down here. Down here. <laughs> my bad. Uh, there's the spring and this little mouse right here that like to be a little messy. All right. What's blocking in here? There we go. Here's your rod. And then, you know, your other orange piece with the spring. Um... Now you have access to the front of the barrel and the back. Now to access the screws in the back, which are the ones that we're going to be taking out, we're not going to focus on the ones up here. It's not too necessary right now. Um, they could be kind of hidden. It looks like there's a whole bunch of holes in the back of the turret, but that's just for the air to go through to actually push your dart through. It's just the, it's the three holes on towards the outside that makes a nice triangle for you. So I'm going to unscrew those now. Now, just like I said before, if you... um like to do more of the silent stuff, you know what I mean, during your Nerf Wars, don't do, don't do the air restrictor removal because the air restrictors restrict the air and slow down your dart, but, you know, they keep it, you know, silent. And it, instead of making, it, like, the hard slamming of plastic noise, it's just, like, makes, like a, like, a snake noise. You know, like a hissing snake. It's kind of neat, I guess. And it, you know, 
reduces the sound significantly. Um, I mean, I take them out because I figure by the time I pull the trigger, I'm already gone. You know, I'm already run away. I like to do the secret stuff, nighttime missions. That's what I call them, the special spec ops. I mean, um, you know, I like, I do a lot of the things in the dark and stuff like that. And I don't use flashlights. Some people like flashlights and they run around with flashlights. I don't use flashlights. I actually only throw flashlights. I actually roll flashlights down a hallway and they're like, whoa, what's that? <laughs> but, um, yeah. So once you've taken out your three screws, this part comes off easy and a mess like pops up. Now, don't worry about this, this is okay, right? Just set this off to the side. This is what we're gonna be focusing on, and I know it looks like a mess, but you're okay. There's multiple parts to each of these individual posts here. If you actually remove one of them, just pull it off, this disc will come up with it, and inside will be a spring, okay? The spring is what powers the air restrictors, is what, you know, helps the air restrictors. If you plan on keeping the air restrictors, then leave the spring in there, don't lose the spring. And this little piece itself with the three prongs on it is the air restrictor. So keep those in if you are using them. Since I'm taking them out, I'm going to be removing them. So um, I'm just going to do this for all of them. I'm just going to take out, you know, my individual posts. All right. Here we go. All right. Now I have all the springs and restrictors in here. And I'm just going to put them all in my hand at once. There you go. All this is trash. <laughs> all of it is trash. So if you want to throw that away, I'm just going to put it off to the side here and throw it out after because I'm in front of the camera. Now this part, you're pretty much done, except now we got to go to the barrel post. This is where your needle nose pliers will come in. You're just going to come in and snip all the parts off. I like to cut my hand over so that no pizzas go everywhere. And, you know, if you have a dog running around, you don't want them to bite and chew on stuff like I do. I mean, I just like to do real quick. The plastic is relatively weak. And we'll do some sanding afterwards. If you don't have, you know, the sanding just makes it look smoother and look a lot cleaner. Even though you're not going to really see it, to me, just like, you know, I don't have OCD or anything. It's just, you know, I like a nice, you know, clean blaster. And you never know, you know, I always think that, you know, if you do everything, you know, right and you try your hardest on it, you know, it'll come out better in the end. So that's how I think of it. So I'm just going to snip them with the pliers here and we'll be done that. Um, you can get sandpaper at your local hardware store. The lower the grit, uh, the rougher it is. So, um, basically, it seems to me, <laughs> in my opinion, it seems like if you were to go to your local hardware store, 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 and you were like, can I have two grit sandpaper? They'd probably give you two rocks from outside <laughs> and say, here, excuse these. But, you know, uh, I have, you know, here, I have 40 grit, which is ridiculous. Ridiculously low. I don't really have any other grit, but you know, I didn't buy it. So, <laughs> and then once you've taken off your barrel post, now you have these six discs left. You just pop them back onto this thing all individually, and that's actually it. You know what I mean? And you know we're done that. But um, you know if you're gonna sand them, you might want to take them off and just do it. But I'm just gonna put it in here just to show you where they go, and then you would put this piece back on. If you plan on painting, you're going to remove these three Phillips head screws. And these two parts come off, you know, it's easy and it looks, the one black part looks like this. And I'm actually going to paint these so this is what the orange piece looks like. But, you know, you can't see the full thing because I'm going to paint it and I taped over it with the frog tape. So, um, that's what that looks like. But since I am going to be painting these, I'm going to be removing these Phillips head screws and actually going to show you what's happening down there. Now, I'm going to go into the serious internals and I'm going to tell you what you're going to want to know when you, um mod it so that you when you put this thing back together you do it the correct way and you don't do what I did and um I actually didn't have the air plunger fully in the upper in the forward position so what ended up happening was I was you know air was going through perfectly fine I put the internals in right except the air plunger since it wasn't fully forward my darts weren't shooting and I was like what did I do I thought I did everything right and I did except for that part <laughs> which Seems like the most silly thing, but, you know, whatever. All right, so that's what the orange piece looks like, and it's simple. You know, there's nothing much to it. You're going to have a lot of parts everywhere. Just keep everything organized, and you'll be okay. All right, um, I'm doing a whole bunch of projects all the time, so I'm used to this. Now, here's what your um, full internals look like. There are two springs in here and a lot of these uh, silver-headed screws with, like, the discs around them. So, um, 
you know, I recommend, you know, you be careful with this. So, and these you might want to take a picture of, but I've shown it to you now, so you know what you're doing. Um, I'm going to start with this piece right here. This is easy. You just pull this right out, um, and the spring comes with it. I usually just keep the spring attached to these things and put them off to the side, and I'm fine. Um, and then this notch, I, you know, you can just take that out if you want, but, you know, I don't think it's that you know, bad if you leave it in there for painting, so I'm just going to keep it in. Um, this is your return spring at the top. If you plan on painting, you might want to remove that, and I actually am. Um, what the return spring does is that's what, when you pull your slide back and you feel that hard pull, and then after it's cocked and you try to pull it back again, it's like really loose. Well, that's just the return spring. You have that big mega spring for that hard pull, and then you have that small spring just to keep it in that forward position. So I keep this off to the side as well. All right, now we're gonna get into the big internals here. Um, nothing big really at all, to, to be honest. I like to start with the trigger, where the trigger is, and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. There is a, there, there is a spring behind it, so I'm gonna show you that. So after you remove this screw here where the trigger is, you can just, I'm just gonna drop the screw. You have the trigger, you remove the trigger, and it's going to be attached to a spring in the back here. It comes off. It's just hooked on. You're fine there. And then you can just put the screw back with that and then unscrew the spring. Remember, you know, if you're having trouble with where the uh, parts go, you can just take a picture from this video or screenshot if you're doing mobile, whatever you want. But, um, yeah, it seems like I'm going into crazy depth with this. But I feel like if you walk through it, you know, with someone, you'll be, you'll be just fine. So I'm just going to do that. Um... Now you have the four Phillips head screws here. What I advise that you do is that um, I like to start from the uh, the two going this way, like that make like a T formation, and not that arc. So I'm gonna start with those. Um, yeah, and after you know when I, I like to do the red and black uh, for my guns, and you know the red and black hoodie as I wear. This is like my main thing. We're planning on making some kind of weird movie thing. I wasn't really fully on board with it, but, you know, we'll see how it comes out. Um, you know, but these are, I'm actually making the guns that my character is supposed to use, so. Kind of into it. These are going to be called the Deathbringers. I'm not going to write Deathbringer on it because, you know, I'm not like that, but, you know, whatever. Once you remove those two Phillips head screws, this, this piece will slide back and forth. This one little piece here will slide back and forth. That's okay. Um, just don't worry about that. You'll get it in when you remove the next two Phillips head screws. So I'm going to remove those now. Now be careful. If you don't press hard enough, you will strip your screws. And stripping your screws is the worst possible thing when you mod these guns because you can't mod them anymore when the screw's stuck. And since some of these holes are deep, you know what I mean, you could screw it up. So please don't screw, strip your screws because it would be horrible. And it seems like you have to buy a new gun sometimes instead of just breaking it off, which can be a real pain in the ass. All right, um, now that you, when you remove the two Phillips head screws, this part should just lift right out, you know, with a little bit of finessing with the fingers. <laughs> so that's okay. Keep the Phillips head screws with that as well. And then that little T part will eventually want to pop out. There is a spring behind here, and that's just for that button that allows you to release your barrel. So just take this T piece out, take this sliding plastic piece out, these aren't locks, these are necessary parts, so you will need these. These are necessary for the option of the blaster. Now you have, uh, you should have two shells, and with no screws in them. Oh, I do have a screw in this one here. Yep, I do have a screw. So if you have a screw, no big deal, just take it. Sometimes they don't like to go out, I just go on the opposite side and push down and through, and you're good. Now you, it almost looks like you have two of them. That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? But um, now you have your two shells, and I'm going to show you how to tape them for painting. You know, if you if you don't want to um, do any of the painting, then removing those last internal parts is unnecessary, and you do not need to do that. I'm doing this because I am painting the uh, this blaster. Um, you know, then it's just reassembly, and I'll show you reassembly in the end. But the guns will be a different color, so, you know, don't get too confused. You'll be okay. Just, um, you know... Uh, have fun in modding this because this is definitely you know a cool thing you know being able to um, change the way guns actually supposed to work and you'll be pretty surprised with the performance at the end 
I don't have a chronograph to show you the readings, but I can show you that I can tell you that a stock Maverick is usually a little bit lower um, in performance than the Elite guns now. And when you do this mod, it'll put it just above average. That's what I've seen in the past, at least. I've modded this. These are. Um, I've already modded one Maverick, and now this will be another set of two. So I'll be modded three Mavericks now. So, yeah, all right, I'm going to show you taping now. Okay, uh, taping step. So when you're taping, you know, your Nerf gun, you want to always have a game plan, what colors you want, how you're going to do it, um, all that jazz. I like to use, um, uh, oh my gosh, <laughs> I don't even have the paint up here, it's downstairs. Um, I'll, I'll send the link to you guys. I'll show, put a link in the description. That's what everyone says, right? Yeah, I'll do that. Put a link in the description. It's a common paint that everyone's been all like a lot of mod people have been using for a while. Um, Coop seven seven two, um, Mac two one two, Mag two one two. Yeah, that's his name. Yeah, they've been using that paint for a while. Um, they've experimented with a whole bunch of different paints, and I truly think that they are the best quality paint. Um, they give a nice sleek, shiny, or not shiny, but a nice solid color. If you want to um, add a protective layer to it, which I highly recommend, you would want to get the clear coat as well, which I'll also put in the description. You can put a primer on if you want, which allows it to better fit with plastic, you know, or let your paint stick better to plastic, but I don't think it's necessary, um, especially since this is such a basic gun. But, you know, this is a sidearm, so if you are holstering it, I do recommend that you do put the clear coat on, maybe even two coats. I usually do one coat and it's perfectly fine. And this gun, the, or this gun, this paint is strong. It is good. It is good, strong paint, but it is somewhat expensive because it is like um, auto paint. It, it's you can get it like an auto shop. You know what I mean? So it it is like the high recommended stuff. Um, I want to show you what one of these handles looks like. I just took the frog tape here. I got I got frog tape, and I just taped and you know ran my nail around the edges there. And this you know, I've been I make buffer weapons too for for larping stuff. So, um, I do a whole bunch of arts and crafts and stuff. So, I, I'm really good with tape, but, you know, if you're not really good with tape, this can be frustrating, and I'm sorry for that. Um, don't blame me for it, but, you know, it just comes with practice. You definitely just have to keep taping and taping, and eventually you'll come up with your own method of how to do it. I usually like to, um, just, you know, run my nail around those edges, and it looks fine. And then, um, you know, just curve it around the back so that you don't get, uh, paint in unnecessary areas you know it's not crazy if you get a little bit in because it does make it look better if you see a little yellow line going across but you know it's okay i'm try i'm choosing to um not paint the handle and this little black bar up top you know what i mean even with the iron sight here i'm going to keep those black and whatever this is um to you know for the red and black look and it's going to look a lot slicker in my opinion so i'm going to do that that's why I tape that off, and then after um, after that, I might you know flip it around and do other stuff. And then internals. If you're doing internals, if you're painting internals, you have to be careful because you don't want to mess up uh, how they operate the gun. So I'm painting the trigger towards more of the back because this is where the, the spring and the screw is. So you're gonna want to make sure well, the screw is up here. So I actually should tape that off. But you want to be careful with that because you don't want to mess up, you know, where those screw ports are. It's not a hundred. It's not terrible if you do it, but it could make the trigger pull a little bit, you know, um, rougher. It might be a little bit harder to do. Um, I'm also doing the top of the barrel um, uh, uh, red because, you know, when you, you saw as I was putting these things together, that sticks out and it's orange. So I don't like the orange. I like the red better. So I do that. I'm also painting the slide. I'm choosing to paint the slide, so I'm going to paint both of these black. Obviously, this some of this is already black, so it doesn't matter if I paint on top black on black. It just makes it a harder black, I guess. I don't know. Um, so there's that. And then uh, I'm going to show you, you know, um, me actually painting. i got to get, like, this mat down from the basement and all that. Um, what you do want to know when you're painting is you paint uh, with spray paint in strokes. You want to make sure you're doing it outside, parent supervision and all that, blah, 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 blah. You definitely don't want to, you know, um, piss your parents off if you accidentally, like, in your basement or in your garage, you know, spray paint the floor, you know, if they didn't want that. Or, you know, um, make sure you have a high, good ventilation through that room or whatever if you're doing it. Because if you're, you know, plan on doing it inside. 
because um the fumes and stuff after a while could you know be harmful but you know you're fine um so i recommend doing it outside you know preferably on a you know not like a burning hot day but not a freezing day either you know even if you even with this paint i did it in the freezing weather even though you're not supposed to and my and it says that your paint will crack my paint didn't i don't know why it didn't crack but it just didn't so if it you know it's got a tolerance it really does have a tolerance and when you are painting these things, some people may say, why can't you just paint the, uh, you know, with this, you know, on, you know, with the barrels and all that. I just tried to paint a Nerf Flip Fury and I accidentally forgot to take the turrets apart. And they actually, the paint has a, such a tremendous seal that it was impossible for me to take off. And my dad's like 10 times stronger than me. I was like, dad, can you like help me out? He couldn't pry it off either. We actually like had to get like a knife and stuff and we still haven't gotten it off yet. But I'm choosing to do this at like 12.15 at night, so we'll see how this works out. Alright.